Does my 20 seconds start now? <laughs> yeah, okay. In Japan, everything's dizzy with images. Writer Katsuyo Ishiguro said that once, and it seems true, especially when you walk past a shop in Osaka that just looks like a Las Vegas neon wonderland. I'm, I'm going to show you some pictures of my zine while I ironically talk about something you can't see on screen, which is, um, so you just have to kind of use the viewfinder in your brain. Uh, I want to talk about going to Nawashima, which is this art-filled island, which has this amazing museum that doesn't even have a lot of art in it. And it's all just like white and clean, concrete surfaces, and the staff members actually wear white to blend into the walls. So walking past to see a room of Monet, they actually recede into the background. Um, now, Monet doesn't actually set my heart racing. To me, it's kind of boring, grandmother-pleasing art. So I wasn't super excited about what was ahead. But because the interiors in this museum are so extremely pared back, when you walk into this room of Monet's water lilies, it's this high-level visual blast you're unprepared for. It's like someone has dynamited the colour scale. It's such a physical effect, you actually start to trip out on all the sunset colours seeping into the water. In Japan, you can get dizzy on an image you've seen in so many school lessons before because it was all about the simple, thoughtful and pared-back way they presented the paintings. This is um, a local bakery that my friend Grace illustrated. And this is my friend Ebony. She does a popular blog. And I asked what was one of her favorite daily occurrences. And she says it's in Japan. And she says it's the um, ramen van driving past with its special ramen song and visible stovetop in Japan. This is the equivalent to the ice cream van. This is my friend Mark Drew. He has a fascination with abandoned amusement parks. Um, one time he found a weed choke amusement park and because he had no torch, he used his camera flash to light his way through a ghost house full of low budget zombie and witch mannequins. This picture reminds me of um, the Monocle's creative director talked about the Japanese idea of minge, which is roughly craft for the people. He said that in the West, the most beautiful objects tend to be the most expensive. For, for, for instance, jewelry that you can't afford. With minge, it's about making the thing that everyone can use, like a spoon or a bowl, the most beautiful or simple. I love that idea and explains why I got a crush on so much cutlery in Japan. Um, this was a, a 19th century building uh, that used to be a kimono merchant's house. The meal we had there was amazing and everything right down to the paper chopstick wrappers was beautiful. Um, this is a meal with landscaping. That's pretty incredible. Um, this was a, a 10 course vegetarian dinner in a Buddhist temple in Kyoto. It was so beautiful that there was this traffic jam of all the courses we got because they all banked up because we were too busy taking photographs because it was so insanely beautiful. And this is made with, um, so they crushed green tea noodles to get that chestnut husky effect. And it's so effective that people actually don't eat it because they think it's the real thing. And this place also does, um, they did like tempura flowers. They did these woven baskets out of seaweed. Um, yeah, it was so ridiculous. A rainbow striped tofu, but actually the most delicious thing was not even, like everything is so insanely beautiful, but um, the nicest thing was something that was really simple to look at, which was this pickled ume tempura served in a Japanese pepper and ginger soup. It was one of the most memorable spoonfuls of my life. Uh, it's very Japanese. You can only fit like three people in there. <laughs> Um, and run by one man who is a baker who specializes in a type of vegan handmade soba found nowhere else in Tokyo. We had these warm bowls of nori topped noodles and a platter of grilled vegetables, just really honest flavors extracted with no fuss. So this place opens at 7 a.m. and it closes when they run out of bagels, so you really have to like listen to your alarm clock to get there. Um, and the man who makes they have such amazing bagels, like what you get for 200 yen is incredible. And the guy, it's in Yanaka and they have a very elderly population. So the guy who runs it makes the bagels really soft. So the locals can chew on it. And regardless of how much teeth you have intact, it's still worth a visit. Um, this is a bullet train and I'm not going to get all 
you know, mooning over the high-tech wonders of that. But I will say how much railway bentos are just a shot of compartmentalised mealtime joy. Uh, this is Japan during autumn. And I love how next level the Japanese are in their celebration of the seasons. You can buy confectionery, that's sugar lace replicas of autumn foliage. And I just love that extremely simple and paired back rainbow of crinkly red and sometimes yellow and sometimes brown that follows you as you walk around in autumn. Um, it's, it's very hypnotic to look at. And speaking of hypnotic, I have no deep or profound thing to say about this, except we spent an embarrassingly long amount of time looking at the jellyfish tanks at Osaka Aquarium. But there's something so time-stopping about watching these creatures just pulse and float and service, surface. And just trying to capture this dreamlike effect of seeing this sea life in motion is quite mesmerising. It made us really late for our arrival in, Tokyo, uh, in Kyoto, because we were just snapping away. Um, and the last photo is... T uh, so a lot of these photos are taken by my boyfriend, Will, and we ended up in Shimbashi, which a travel guide had claimed was the most beautiful street in Asia, and it just led to many arguments over whether it was true or not. Um, but what, this is one of my favourite photos that Will took, and it's just off that street. And what I love about it is just one small detail, just a ball in focus that leaves you dizzy with your memories of Japan.